if Trey's lined up, we're going to get into that. And Trey, are you with us tonight? I thought I keyed him in. I thought I saw you him. Know, I, I'm with you. I just had to unmute it. Okay. Trey, you got it? Can you spot him? I got him. Got it? Okay. Well, welcome. Um, tonight we're going to do an inside-out turning. But before we get started, I wanted to show you what we finished up from last time. Remember last week we did the in stone inlay. This is the finished ornament from that piece. Oh, you're just showing off. Um, well, this is, this is what we did last week. So the, we did the uh, inlay. Um, I sort of I took a, a diamond uh, burr and sort of recessed that back. But these are uh, uh, red coral beads. If you look at it from the side, you can see it, there's a little bit of hole there. But you know, I put the sides. So it's not too bad. So. Yeah, you know, that's what we finished up last time. I just want to show you the finished product. Very nice, very nice. Thank you. This week, although I don't specialize in this one, um, we're going to be doing a. Uh, we're going to turn the body of just the inside out turn uh, item. Now these I need to still put something inside of them, but uh, I'm just going to go through the process of what I do to turn them. Good. All right. I wish Ronnie was feeling better tonight. We'd get him to tell the story about the guy that did one with the drill press, but not hollowing it. But uh, the, the bottom line of the story is it blew up. <laughs> so. Okay. Now, now I start out, I'm, I'm working to getting something like this. And I start out, the first thing you got to do is make sure that your wood is square, that these blocks are square. Otherwise, they're not going to line up properly. So I actually put it on a table saw and then ran it through a, a surface sander to, uh, to make sure it was all squared out. And what I want, wind up doing, here's a picture. Uh, um, I've got a stick in there and a couple foot long. And then I'm, I taped it together. And what I did is I cut them on the tape marks. I simply cut it on the on the tape. I marked the tape and cut it on the tape marks. This is a piece of one of the one of them. I then go back and sort of drill a little hole in the end of it. And the reason and and the reason why this says about four or five layers of tape on. The reason why is I don't want my tailstock to be spread. If I come in with the tailstock and push on it, it'll spread it. I do not put any glue on it. I simply tape it. And what holds it together, there's two things that hold it together. One is my chuck is gonna hold it together. Come on out a little bit. Let's go backwards. Okay, my chuck is gonna hold it together because the jaws are gonna grab it. And the ring on my tailstock, this outside circular ring on the tailstock will also hold it together on that end, in addition to the tape. So the spur's not biting, but the ring is. That's correct, and I, I try to make it so the spur bites just a little bit, but it does not, I, I don't want the spur biting. I, the hole I drilled, I want it to be fairly firm in there to keep it from being flopping around, but the ring is what's biting on it. It's the main part of the bite. And I'm turning this between centers. And if you don't feel comfortable that you're getting enough uh, bite on this end, put another roll, put another piece of tape on it. It won't hurt um, to add more tape to it. But the spur is biting it. Now what I want to cut on here is I basically want to cut and I want, I want to cut a shape like this out of it for the inside. And I found another one back there. You need to leave a little beef on one end of it uh, so that when you turn around and, and, and put it back in your chuck, it's easier to grab in there that you have enough room to grab it with. Let's come in and turn this, turn the speed down to get it started and turn it, turn it up. Um, I'm gonna use a roughing gouge to get started. And then I'm gonna jump to a, um, a gouge that I haven't, shown you before it's just a colonial gouge it's an old-fashioned spindle gouge this works very well on long sweeping curves 
versus the other uh, spindle gouges work better on, on I, I, you can get a good sweeping curve with this gouge a lot easier. And on the inside, since I'm probably going to come back and paint it, I'm just going to use a scraper on it. Uh, negative rake. Up to the spindle gouge. You see how it makes a nice looking curve. I'll show you one thing on here. The width of your th of your side is going to be this here. That's how wide it's going to be on the side. So if I want it a little smaller, I need to go a little, little deeper. Let me go a little smaller on this one. Let's make one more pass on it. Put a negative break on it. Trey, uh, we get we got some new turners out there and they're gonna wonder why you didn't go down and up with one pass. Tell them why. Oh, okay. Um let me find a piece of wood. It's easy to it's easier to explain on a piece of wood. If I take a knife, I know I have a knife blade in here. And I'm sharpening this pencil. I'm cutting this pencil downhill. I'm going downhill. The grain of the wood runs this way. My grain is running this way. I, I could that wood cuts that way. Especially if my knife was, was a little sharper. Yeah, it cuts that to... way. Okay, I gotta reasonably cut. If I try cutting this way, it just yeah. digs in and tears up. So that's exactly the same thing that's happening here. I cut downhill and I get to the bottom and I go to the other side and cut downhill and then blend it at the bottom. Is there a particular profile you're trying to cut there, Trey? Not necessarily. I'm just getting sort of around, or, okay. you know, something of this nature, just sort of roundish, gotcha. uh, which, which is a good shape to put something inside of. So that in so that diameter you're you're going to now how do how do you know how how small or how large it needs to be just well um this is bigger in diameter than what i normally turn um i went to go find some wood to turn it with uh this is maple that's had bugs in it i wasn't going to use it for anything else and I said hey it'd probably do pretty good on the for an inside out i don't mind the bug holes on an inside out ornament so I said, well, I'll go ahead and try it. It was a five quarter material. I already had it, so I was gonna throw it away. And so instead of throwing it away, I said, well, I'll cut it up and give it a shot. 
Uh, next time I do it, I'm probably going to get this, bring it down to about an inch instead of the inch and a quarter. This is a little bit too bigger, bigger than what I want. Yeah, that's, I'm about an inch and a quarter um, there, which is a, probably a little fatter than what I normally do. So then you're shooting about half, half the, making a diameter that's half the width of the initial blank? Yeah, but well, the main thing I'm looking for, what I'm gonna wind up with is my side is got that's my that's my side that you're gonna see. That's the diameter that you're gonna have on the outside. So that ring there is this diameter right here. Okay. From okay. here to here is that diameter. Right. Okay. That'll be the smallest diameter. So you just go from there and bring it down to whatever you want on to on it. Okay. Um, this one here is actually a little smaller. Yeah, if you're absolutely crazy, go real fine, but don't do it in the beginning. Um, you need a you little can piece. Take it small. You can always take it smaller on the outside, too, if you want to make it thinner. Yes. When you, when you switch things around. Okay. Um, unfortunately, when you start doing that on the outside, he's saying that, but see how thin that's getting? If yes. I try to keep cutting, that that's going to cut through. This will yes. be too thin. So the answer is no. You you need to make the decision now on the thickness of that, because that's as far down as you can go. I couldn't go any th thinner than that, because there, there's you know you're based on that taper, and I try to get down thinner on that. It's going to go down to nothing. On that wall, on this wall thickness. So be careful with that. Be careful with trying to plan it afterwards. Plan, try to plan it before. Okay. Okay, now you get the right scraper. Okay, you have to go to the grinder all the time. I basically just ran, ran one quick swipe on that bottom edge, set on about a 20, 25 degree angle. Okay. That's all I'm gonna do, and I over scraped it from time on. But I have a good surface, no tear out on it. Um, I'm gonna come back. I got a little here. I got a line in there. I want to take out. You got a tool mark in that area, section. Now I'm using a scraper without a handle. That's the handle I'm using, so. Ooh, ooh, um, breaking rules. Well, a negative rate, they don't, it seems to run very smoothly. It but, does. When we get into sharpening tools, we're gonna to explain to new turners what negative rake really is. And yep. uh, that you can do it on almost any scraper. We'll talk about that when we do sharpening. Yep. So I now have right, we lost your audio. Okay. You, okay. you got it back? Yes. Oh, I, yes I'll, okay. Um, so this is where I sit right now and if I look here, I can see the edges on the bottom. When you first start out, you need to number it, number your pieces, and define the center, define a, you know, an edge to it, you know, what's to the center. And I'm gonna jump over and see it, if I can. Trey, oh, yeah. sorry. Yes. Um, can I just jump in there? Because I know you're probably not going to do it at the moment, but I, I just wanna jump in and give people a tip of the day. Um, if they're doing involuted, some people try to do a shape inside the involuted. So whereas you've created the circle on the inside, you might then put a ball of different wood 
on the inside. And what you want to try and do is create a shape that is something similar to what the inside shape is going to be. And if you just bring, bring the wood back over onto the lathe so that where you've numbered it, Trey. Yes. Yeah. Just a second. Got an idea, Martin. That's a nifty accent. Okay, I'm back. Okay, it's numbered. Right. What what Trey's done there is numbered them so that he knows which way he's going to turn this around. If I was going to fit something into the centre of that now that I wanted to fit correctly, what I would do is I would just slice down one side of it, which then allows you to leave the tape on it and you can turn it round to see if your shape fits inside. If it doesn't fit you can then close it back up and put it back on the lathe without breaking the whole thing apart. Once you've broken it apart, it's very difficult to get lined up and put back together to glue back up. And, and that's very true. Now, one thing I did do, if you just, I, cut the, I cut this on a chop saw so my ends are both flat. Yeah. Which gives, and, and that's very important to put it on a, a saw and cut it because that gives me a reference point that f these flat sides realign it back to that square. Well, if you take a knife now, Trey, and you just, you just go down one side, one, one gap, straight through your tape. So you taped it and then, and then put it on the saw? Right, is so what, what he's gonna do is he's gonna take a knife straight down there, straight down there, then he'll turn it around. So now open it up, Trey. Not quite. That knife's blunt. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't sharpen your pencil. If I, if well, you're it's, a, it's a different knife. The blade is sharp, but I try to get it lined up to the cut. Yeah, you, you, need to line it up to the... you need an English Stanley knife. <laughs> so blade, blade tools, dual part, pocket hey, yeah. knife. Is that an offer to send him one? <laughs> okay. now, you, can see, you can see what I'm saying now if if you turned a shape to go inside there you can check your shape and if your shape doesn't fit and you want to alter the outside of that you can turn it straight back round and put it back on the lathe glue it back up just just put your tape put new tape round it's all done Brilliant. so check your shape I like that that's a, that's a great idea in, in this instance, it's not really applicable, but while Trey was doing this demonstration, for anybody who's trying to put something inside, you can almost have a look at it at this point. Once you've glued it up and it's finished, you can't do nothing with it. Now, is, that the way, is, is that the way he would glue it, the way he's got it right now? Yep. At, yes. You know, yes, it is. Yes, so it is. So cut one side yes, down. Yes, it is. It's the way it's going to be glued. Cut one side <laughs> down, wrap it around, and that's the way you're going to glue it when you go to yes. that's, yes, a great, that's a great tip thank you martin yeah i i've right. never heard of that okay. no that's i do i do involuted but i do involuted where i put something inside um yeah. predominantly a glass decanter okay, so what i do you see is i need no. to make sure i need to make sure that the glass decanter fits tightly within the shape i've created on the inside and that's, this allows me to keep correcting the inside shape. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now the guy that just asked about the gluing, you don't No, it is do not, it. it's not the way I glue it because I'm no. gonna take and rotate each one. That's one, two, three, four clockwise. When I go this way, I get one, two, three, four counterclockwise. So it's, it's oh. not precisely the way I'm gluing it, but he's 100% correct on, for measurement and checking the inside. Okay. Right. Right. Because when I glue them together, I'm going to rotate each one of these 180 degrees and then put them back and glue them together. I or should you. I go the other? Or should I go the other way? I don't know. But, thanks, Trey. I just wanted. I just wanted to pass that information on while you were doing your demo. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's a good tip. Uh, should I go backwards when you do it? Uh, shouldn't make any difference if your four blocks are identical. Okay. As long as your four blocks are identical, and if you've measured them up and they are, they are identical, it shouldn't matter which way, as long as you're going corner to corner. Not an they, issue. They, they, should, they should be, because I ran them, when I run them through the surfacer, surface sander, uh, I'll run it through, and uh, 
I make sure I run them all through all through at the uh, same time, same place on the sander. So. Great. Uh, I'm make sure I'm, I'm stay gonna in the say, same general area of the sander. I don't love them one another. I'm going to say you do it your way because when your inside meets your outside and you end up with eight pieces, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go to, to gluing one up. And uh, let me switch cameras. If you're talking, we don't hear you. I don't think he's talking. I think he's trying to find that button. Can't hear you, Trace. Okay, can you hear me now? Now we got you. Okay, because I'm I'm using the mic on the other side of the room. This mic, the battery's probably dead on this mic. But wait a second. It wasn't turned on. See if that makes a difference. <laughs> that the on and off switch. Don't okay. Switch. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I have marked this one, two, three. Uh, I normally personally don't mark it because I actually have a ring here in the middle that, from the live center and I just rotate it right here on the bench when I do it to glue them up. One thing that's important that you do do though is that you clean up any fuzz on these edges because when you put it back together those edges are going to be mating back up and if you're not careful that fuzz will hold it off of the edge. I've turned around, put a little bit of paint on this one. It's got some uh, red paint with some uh, uh, gold uh, dry brush on it. It's sort of sticking it together. Now when I put these together, I'm gonna take the piece, rotate it 180 degrees. Rotate 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and 180 degrees. Now, I'm not actually gonna put glue on it tonight, but uh, what I would do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on these two surfaces, rub it, rub, rub it down so I don't get too much in there, and do the same thing, put it on th these two surfaces, these two surfaces, these, and put them together. It's just to save, save time for not gluing them. Okay, and then, Hey, Trey, in your initial tape up, did you tape them and then hit, uh, put it in the saw? That is correct. Thank you. Okay, um, Trey. There was a stick that, was, and by doing so, I, I actually just cut through the tape with, at the joints. Right. Uh, Trey, when, in other words, your circle from your uh, ring compression there when you were mounting it on the drill goes from the center and they all go off to the outside corners. That is correct. Here are those okay. little rings right here on the outside corners. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thank but you. But I've highlighted. Okay. Now it's wet glue and we're taping it now, correct, Trey? I've, glue, I've, I've artificially glued it, so and then I'm taping it. Okay. Just so you guys that were following along, the tape is to assist in gluing that. No, right now it's to assist in gluing. Then I'm going to, here's one I've just finished, finished gluing, but I will, I will put pressure on that joint to hold it together, to hold my glue joints together. I'll come in from, and I do that because I think I get a better fit if I tighten the, tighten the joints up. So I tighten those two sides up. Flip it over. And you're also not fooling around the slip and slide of wet glue. Uh, that's correct, because I've got tape on it. The tape, the tape's gonna hold it in place on that. And then I'll let that dry as a glued piece. <clears throat> I haven't glued this one, but that's, you know, but I'll just let it dry. 
Let's say you were gonna you were gonna paint the inside. Let's say you wanted to paint the inside red. Would you do that before you flipped them around? Yes, I would. Thank you. I always do the finish on the inside before I flip them. Gold leaf looks real well on it, real well, and everything on it. Okay, the one, the one he put in there with the phony glue is painted on the inside. He showed us it. Now that one right there, what would you do, Trey? This is the one I just turned. Okay, that we just turned. I, I would take and paint the outside of this or inside of it. Paint this, and that would be my inside of it before I turn it around, which is what I've already done. I did on this one and the one we just did. But then we'll go ahead and turn one. Of, I'll go ahead and turn one of these. As you said, it works good with old, with gold gold leaf or that phony leaf you get at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, it, it works real well with the gold leaf. It's a little challenging to get it on, but it's nice. It gives you a nice speckle on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn one of these. This one here, I actually because I didn't leave a lot of space, I went ahead and turned it down so I had a tenant to try to grab it with because I don't have a lot of space on this end. We're gonna go ahead and do this one. Um, and I'm just gonna put this back in the chuck the way I took it out. I put a little burr in the end for my live center. I'm not perfectly aligned, I'm off a few thousandths there, but it should be close enough. And we're gonna put this back in the chuck. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Did you say something, Ed? It's 30 it's minutes after minutes. the hour. If you're just joining us, Trey is doing a demonstration on an, uh, what is called an inside out. Uh, Martin's got a little return for it from, from the, uh, the UK. Um, but this is a great demonstration on turning inside outs. And it's not restricted to ornaments. Uh, you'd be surprised what nice ornament of what decoration it could do for a standing piece, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Trey. Okay. That's the best explanation I've ever seen on it. Now this one here has been glued up. Uh, that was the glue up tape for glue up. Back to rough and gouge. Yeah. You probably can see, you can see the shadow in here on that edge. Well, well I'll think this that your opening you can see in the shadow as you look over the town. Go back to a sometimes trying to get into corners like this. Harding tool is good, good way of cleaning out and get rid of some extra wood, especially if you start getting close.
Okay, I'll stop it just so you can see what it looks what we're, what it looks like right now. Okay, I do want to I do want to get that's a flat spot. I want to make sure I at least get all my flat spots turned out off of it. And I'm running a little close here coming back on it, but that should be okay. So let's keep on going down and we'll take some of those get those flat spots out of there. A little while ago, Trey, you referred to that spindle gouge with the, with that you're using for people just joining us. The reason he used that spindle gouge, it has got more beef on the back of it to stand, uh, to, to give you control without wobbling. And he's got more, instead of a fingernail grind or a baby, a lady finger grind, it's more like a thumb grind. This is what the old spindle gouges of, you know, many, many years ago looked like. They call them colonial gouges now, but... If you bought a set of lathe tools back in the 50s, this is what you're going to get for a spindle gouge. Yeah. And one swing on a grinder makes it beautiful. Yes. And I do want to get most of this stuff taken care of first versus this side because I start thinning out too much I I don't have as much support flat when I'm looking at this here and hopefully you, maybe you can keep on backwards and focus you can see it a little bit you can see where there's a double shadow right here there's a solid shadow and a double shower shadow and what you're seeing is this area that I still have flats on it you're still seeing this flat area is where you're seeing the double shadow in it and you're turning it. Now, I could quit here and just sand that out, but I'm going to take that down a little further in there. Pretty much right on that line that had it in there. What is your spindle speed? I don't know. I don't have a readout. Are you I'm, on a, I'm on a mid belt setting and um, oh, about a little bit halfway, half speed on a mid belt setting. And I don't know what this lady does, so I don't. I don't know if you can still see it in here. I no longer have that double image right here. I still have it here. I'll just leave that there. And I just cut it away. It should be down. Yeah, I could see it before. So it's showing up. It was showing up on your video. So you can see that image on there. Um, switch gouges because I need to get into this corner a little better. This, 
This is a what I use for most of my spindle turning. It's Marshall Ace grind that he uses for finials. Um, I love it as a as a grind on it. So. Then you start with a little, bit, a little more wood. Try to make sure I don't cut through the top. Oh, I'm getting close. I don't want to go too much further on that. What turn is if you got a question for Trey, you can put it in chat and we'll relay it to him if you just you don't feel like you can talk on the air. Uh, that's it's more than welcome. And chat is where you put all the information you want to share with other turners. That is that is inserted on the inside. How how it's how it's held during the turning. So the item which is inserted in the inside is held during the outside turning. How is that done? Uh, normally, most of the things I put in there fit through the opening, so I can insert it afterwards. Okay, so they're small enough to fit through the opening. And then they're small enough to fit through the opening. Uh, Dane, I've done them where I put the piece in, okay. packed it in paper, and then cut it, but the paper kept it balanced. Okay. Now, right now, I would turn around and go ahead and sand this. Um, on this one here, I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to do it similar to what I did with this one, put a finial on the top uh, versus this. Um, I don't really like turning the finial as part of it, and the reason why I'm talking the top joint is because I have four pieces of wood coming together. I think I like it better to put a separate piece on there. I think it matches up better and looks better. So, which is what I'm going to do to this. I would turn around and sand this through the grits and then part the two things off. I uh, don't sand tonight. We're doing a two hour special on sanding. I'm not, I, no, uh, yeah, I'm not going to sand tonight. I'm just saying I would sand it. I'm not going to sand. I'm going to stop right here. Uh, and conclude my uh, demo from this point. No, but what I'm saying is when we don't have a demonstrator, we're going to show sanding for two hours. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm not going to show sanding. That just takes up time. But but I'd sand it, and I would probably put a, a backing plate on the sandpaper when I'm sanding it so it's not bouncing too bad. And you don't the, other thing you, the other thing you're going to do after it's sanded is you're going to sand this little you'll sand this little inside edge on both sides to knock that sharp corner off on it. So it's a little sharp corner um, that you want to knock off. Anything that's not perfectly aligned, sandpaper corrects it, corrects that little alignment at the joint. That was slightly off, a little bit of sandpaper. Now it's perfectly aligned on that joint. Very nice, sir. So, any any questions or comments or 
Now remember, Terry. Uh, the most PC, things will fit inside. Yes. Go ahead. The PC is Train. showing the inside is not painted. The the prototype is we were looking at the stack ups. He had already painted the red on the inside. Is this one painted? Yes, it is. That's oh, red I with like all see it because of the dust. Pardon me. Can you see it now? Yeah, now we're there. Okay. Trey, you were talking about lining those points up by sanding on the, making them perfect on you know your openings. Um, yes. One of the things I've noticed before is that if one is off, generally they're all four off, and you have to go through and do them all. Well, looking at that one, this one here. Yeah. Well, that one there is not off. What's happening is a hole in the wood at the, at the point that it joins. Right. Um, the rest of them look like they're on. Um, we're pretty close to being on. What do you use to glue them? Tight bond or CA? Tight bond. Okay. I don't like CA glue unless I have to use it. So Got it. Put, we're putting things together. Wood holds a whole lot better with, with uh, glue made for wood. Yep. I, uh, CA goes so fast, it's kind of hard for some turners to understand. You have seconds. Yep. So would that be possible to do with three pieces of wood instead of four? Yes, it is. Uh, or, the, this, or six. The, you can put any angle, any number you want in there. The difference is my joints. Would you change your degree from my, 90 my, to? My my joints are 90. If I had three pieces, that joint would be 120 degrees. Those joints would be 120 degrees. But remember, it's cut that way and that way, but it's also has to be cut this way when you cut it. So your piece that you're cutting it that you are made up looks like that. You're have because, a because you have to flip it. Because that angle here and that angle there and all that, and these, these two, it has to be a parallelogram. That length and that length have to be the same. All four of those lengths have to be the same. Because when you, you rotate it around, they this was the inside to start with. Now it's going to be the outside. So all that has to match back up. But yes, you can. I saw a beautiful one done, done out of eight pieces the other day on Pinterest. It was absolutely gorgeous. And, and basically, Martin had an insert in it, Martin. Basically, this is what you're dealing with when you when you go with the with three pieces. You got that here, there's one piece here. This is another piece here. And your third piece is here. And you got three pieces that you're putting together. Um, just make sure your angles are straight and the, uh, are straight, or, li or line up properly. And not only do they line up, that distance and that distance and all the di all these distances have got to be the same size. Thank you, Trey. Appreciate that. You're welcome. So now I think we have Matt Harbor lined up to do a three-sided piece for us. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. Thanks, Trey. That was an excellent demonstration. That's a very brave man to be doing inside out or, or as, as I call it, involuted turning, um, especially to nearly 100 people in front of him. Um, so <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't see anybody. No, well, that's great. <laughs> we were all watching you. 